This is free response question number one from 2024 AP Physics 1. Uh, in this problem, it says that a block of mass M is released from rest at point A, a height of 6R above the horizontal. After being released, the block slides down a track as shown. When released from point A, the block does not lose contact, does not lose contact with the track at any point. Point B and C are located at the highest points of the respective circular loops, both of radius R. All frictional forces are negligible, so we can ignore friction. Okay, so the first question here is, uh, says that diagram A shows an energy bar chart that represents the gravitational potential energy, uh, UG, of the block Earth system. Okay, and that's important because there wouldn't be any gravitational potential energy if there's not a block, if the Earth was not part of that system. And the kinetic energy K of block at point A, when the block is released from rest at height 6R. So it's starting from rest. So initially there's no kinetic energy. Draw the shaded regions in diagram B that represents the gravitational potential energy UG and kinetic energy K of the block Earth system when the block is located at point B, a height 2R above the horizontal. So these are some things to consider. Uh, shaded regions should start at the dashed line that represents zero energy. Represent any energy that is equal to zero with a distinct line on the energy uh, zero energy line. The relative height of each shaded region should reflect the magnitude of the respective energy consistent with the scale shown in diagram A. Okay, so this graph should be consistent relatively to uh, diagram A. So uh, at location B, we have uh, two uh, forms of energy here. We've got gravitational and we also have um, kinetic energy. Now we know that gravitational potential energy is mgh. And so since this height is uh, 2r and the, it starts at 6r, it's a third. So the height is only one third. Okay. So therefore the energy is going to be, potential energy will be one third. So one third of six is two. So I'm going to put two boxes here, shade that in there, and then this is going to be four. The reason I know it's going to be four is because it needs to add up to six. We started off with uh, six amounts of energy. We need to end up with six amounts of energy. There was an energy that left our system. There's no friction. Uh, so this should equal the, the same amount of energy that we started off with. All right, the next uh, part of the question All right, this says, uh, part B, starting with conservation of energy, derive, conservation of energy, derive an expression for the speed of the block at point B. So that's this location right there. Express your answer in terms of R and physical, physical constants as appropriate. Begin your derivation by writing a fundamental physics principle or an equation from the reference book. Okay, so they gave us a clue here, conservation of energy. So that's saying... Uh, that uh, if there's no energy entering or leaving your system, there's no friction um, that's doing work on your system, uh, then the initial energy is equal to the final, the initial total energy equals the final total energy. Okay. So here we're dealing with mechanical energy, which is kinetic and potential energy. And uh, initially um, we have some potential energy. I'm going to also include kinetic energy. I know it's not moving, but just to be complete, Sometimes you do start off with kinetic energy. And then um, after, once it gets to location B, uh, then you have UGB, it's got potential, and you do have some kinetic energy. Okay. All right, moving on. So uh, the uh, we know that this is going to be zero, right? Because initially it starts off with zero uh, velocity, so zero kinetic energy. The equation for potential energy is MGH. And then I'm going to call the height, the initial height, HA, is equal to the height at B. The potential energy at B is MGHB. And then the kinetic energy at B, L, that's going to be 1 over 2, MV squared. Now, you'll notice that the M's cancel out. So this is kind of nice. They cancel out. That's great. And then that leaves us with um, GHA equals GHB plus 1 over 2 V squared. So uh, I'm looking for V. So I want to try to get V by itself. So let's try to get, get V 1 over 2 V squared. And then um, I'm going to move GHB to the same side as GHA. So I get GHA 
minus g h b. Okay. Now we we can do a little substitution here. We got too many unknowns. Um, so h a and h b we can actually substitute that. Uh, so that's going to be one over two v squared equals g h a is six r six r. That's how high it is minus g and then this is going to be two r two r two r, uh, which gives us six minus two is four. So that gives us G four R. Okay. So now we're looking for V. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna multiply two on both sides. So do two on both sides. So that gives me V squared equals eight G R and square root. So it's a square, I get a square root both sides, and I get V is equal to square root eight G R. Okay. And so that's my final answer right there. All right. So in this problem, um, we start off with the conservation of energy, and uh, we use our equation for potential and kinetic energy, and we solve for the velocity. Okay, so uh, the next part, the next question, is a force question. On the following, on the following dot that represents the block, draw and label forces, not components that are doing drawing forces that are exerted on the block at the instant the block slides through point C. So now we're looking at this point here. Each force must be represented by a distinct arrow starting on and pointing away from the dot. So when we're doing force diagrams, um, and, and what we want to, when we draw the arrows to represent the forces, um, we typically will start the tail. So this is nothing different. Uh, this is just how we draw force diagram. The tail is typically on the, the dot. So we're going to have gravitational force downward, and we know that because any object on Earth, there's a gravitational force pulling on it. It's going to be downward towards the center of the Earth, if you want to be technical, but it's going to be downward. And then there's also a track. So the, the this this uh, uh, this uh, block is going to stay. It's going to stay in contact with the track if it goes fast. It doesn't go fast enough. It's going to fall. So it needs to go fast enough. And if you think about inertia, an object in motion will want to try to resist a change of motion. So at this point, it's going to want to keep on going. But what happens is there's a track, and so that track gets in its way, and so it's pushing it down. So there's another force, okay? And uh, can you two put two forces down? You you can. That's why the dot's so big. And so that's the normal force, normal force. So this is gravitational and the normal force. If the block was not going fast enough, did not have enough speed, it would just, it would just fall off the track. It would lose contact. Okay. Uh, Last question here. A student claims that 4R is the minimum height of point A. Now, why would they say 4R? If you take a look at uh, the situation here, this is 2R, and that's 2R, right? That's 2R. So this total would be 4R. That total would be 4R, okay? So it's saying that if we started at 4R, if we, you had a block that started at 4R right there, um, such that the block can slide through points without losing contact with the track after block after the block is released from rest. Okay, so this student, that's what this student claims. Briefly explain why this claim is incorrect. So they already told you that it's incorrect, right? So now you have to think about why is it incorrect. Okay, so here's the thing. If we start, if we start with uh, 4R, okay, uh, the highest it can get to is going to get, when it goes back up, is 4R. Now the problem with this loop is, in order to stay in contact with this loop to get all the way around, it's got to have some speed. If it doesn't have any speed, it's just going to fall off, right? It's just going to, it's going to fall off. So it needs to have enough speed to be able to get back to, to make this, to, to get all the way around this loop. Okay. So what we're going to say is that if the initial height is equal to 4R, okay, then at point C, all energy is converted to gravitational potential energy, okay? And that means, and the kinetic energy is zero, okay? So that means when it gets to uh, point C, the kinetic energy is zero, and what that means is, and if the kinetic energy, if kinetic energy equals zero, okay, then the velocity equals zero, okay, and the object would lose contact with the track. 